You guessed it, cause you read the title. We're doing Cool and Change. We're doing a cool and change today. Today, what's gonna happen to be on this here shadow, but these are basic tips and tricks and some general information I'm gonna give you guys so you can use to help you do your coolant change on your Honda motorcycle. I like to do a coolant flush first, and the way to flush, you gotta flush all the co old coolant out. Make sure there's no deposits or minerals or like box debris, anything. Sometimes, if you don't do it forever, it gets all built up. It's distilled water. Distilled water has no impurities in it. It's clean. It's not gonna leave any residual, residual uh, material inside the radiator and the water pump. You should not use your home water because, you know, if you have a hard water with minerals and stuff inside, you don't want those deposits to happen to start forming in the bike. So what you wanna do is get yourself some distilled water so we can do a flush. Obviously, you're also gonna need coolant itself and Honda, of course, also has a special crush washer for the drain bolt right here. Take a video, pause, do what you like. That's the serial number. That same serial number, Honda uses the same washers for the Shadow, for the Furies, for whatever the hell you got. If it's, got, if it's liquid cooled, it's got a crush washer, and this one's it. After you do the change, after you empty everything, you put the nut and you, cr you crush that. That way it, it's leak proof because you want to be leaking coolant, do you? That's right. I'll put a description in the description of the part number in case you didn't pause it or something and write it down yourself. And this here 750, I got spec sheets for all my bikes. Honda says they want 1.58 quarts. So with coolant, whatever the color is, you might, you're going to want to stay to that. Honda was using green for the longest time. Now Honda switched over to blue. Uh, you can switch over and get Honda OEM coolant. It's Honda HP coolant. Uh, but Maxima, I, they have great product. I use these guys for their oils and everything else. But uh, if you want to upgrade to the blue, you can, but I'm just gonna stick to what's in there. Also, when you're working on the bike, make sure it's not hot. You do not want to burn yourself. That water is very hot. Coolant drain bolt is on the bottom by the water uh, water pump. I'm gonna get down here on the ground. <laughs> it's gonna be this one right here. What I'll also do if you have a shadow, I'm gonna put a little uh, picture here. You can see a little diagram of which one uh, needs to be addressed. Yeah, so there's a diagram. Do you see it? I hope you see it, because uh, I'm putting that in post. So if you don't see it, then I didn't put it in post as I'm making this. And for whatever reason, Honda decided that they're gonna put their coolant filler neck right under the gas tank. You can undo that, you can unscrew it, but you, there's not enough space to unscrew it and pop it off. You wanna leave that on so when you start draining, the thing doesn't explode all over the wall and all over you. But what we're gonna do first, we're gonna crack the bottom, drain it into a container, come over here, crack the top, let it all flow out, and we'll move on to the next step. We'll fill up with DI water, run the bike real quick, have it cycle through the motor, and then drain it again, drain it again, put the new new crush washer that I put that I showed earlier, crush washer in, tighten that up, 1.58 quarts of coolant. It's not hard, it's just involved, takes time, go slow, I could do it, you could do it, anybody could do it. You just needed some basic tools, socket, and uh, something to measure with. All right, let's get it. Just to confirm, it is the front most bottom one, and I can tell because I, in fact, grabbed it. See, I cracked a little. It's seeping out now. There it is. That's the one. Put my bin in there. Trying to capture my stuff. There's our washer. There's our new it. The vacuum is what's holding up the coolant. As soon as I pop the fill cap, ah, it's gonna blow out. Here we go. That definitely should have blown out like crazy. Well, that was anticlimactic. I wanted a big ass explosion, just like Shamu coming out the bottom of this thing. 
Well, what I'll do is I'll put the bolt back in and then top it off distilled water, run it, cycle it through and see what happens, all right? So while the coolant's draining, I'm gonna take the seat off uh, and the tank. Just slide it back a little bit. I just have to have enough clearance to clear the coolant. Okay. Okay. There. That way it's just enough for me to reach the coolant cap reservoir. Bam. Okay, everything's drained. So what I did was I grabbed some distilled water and a funnel here. So what I did was once all the coolant came out, I put the screw back in. Now that the DI water's in there and the bottom obviously is closed, I'm gonna start to bike up, let the water pump cycle through, let it run a little bit. And uh, then same concept, take the bin, put it underneath, drain the water out. I'm gonna do that two more times, total of two times this time and one more just to have a nice flush. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll just add our 1500 milliliters in there and uh, we'll be good to go. In for a bit let's go ahead and hit that drain plug and clear out our cycled water water is lighter in color green that's a good sign we'll do one more flush after it comes out we'll put the bolt back in and we'll fill it up again and we'll do one more flush and then I don't think we're good a couple, uh, couple more of these in there. Flush, run it and flush it a second time. And then we'll put the final amount in and we're done. You wanna fill to the main part of the neck. The bottom little hose there is the overflow for the expansion tank. When the coolant expands, it's gotta go somewhere. So sometimes it will loop back up and go back in the tank below. So that's that. You know what's full. From the filler neck, it will overflow into the little hose, which will then come down to a little coolant expansion tank right there. We'll start her up, let her run for a couple minutes, drain it out, fill the new coolant in, and we're done. All right, go ahead and get my key. Come around. As you can see, the water is coming out a lot more clear. So that is successfully flushed. Let me just turn the cap here, relieve the pressure. This is the longest part. We'll drain it out. We'll put the bolt in with the new, the new, the old bolt with the new crush washer. Link in the description of uh, where you can get it from, Rocky Mountain, your local parts store. That's where I get all my stuff is my local parts store, Valley Motorsports. Shout out, Chris and Carrie. Always hooking me up, appreciate it. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. All right, that's as far as I'm willing to let that drain out because I'm getting impatient and it's one drip a second. Here's the washer number. Here's the washer. Off with the old. On with the new. Perfect. 19 foot pounds of torque. In this case, I'm just going to wrench it on there because that's what I'm going to do. Push it through, spin, 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 spinny, spinny, spin, spin, spinneroo. Keep spinning, getting tighter, tighter, tighter. Finger tightened. One point five eight quarts, or equivalent to one thousand five hundred milliliters of coolant, and pop the cap, put the tank back on. And we fit in to be done. Looks like alien piss or predator blood. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Leaning the bike on the kickstand, rather off of the jack, the fuller neck becomes a little bit easier for you to pour into. Woo! That's it. We are filled to the neck. That means we're done. Put this on here. Also, another thing, once you have it topped off, <clears throat> hair in my mouth. Once you top off the top of the radiator 
and some goes down to the lower level. You're gonna have your overflow or your reservoir and that usually has a little pop cap. Shadow happens to be right here. But what's important, and I try to get a flashlight in there. There is a upper mark right here and there's a lower mark even further, or even further down below. All right, here's the upper mark. And there's a lower mark. What I do is once I top off the radiator, change this out, take a little hose. And I use an air hose. I actually got an air gun with a piece of hose and put, put it in there and blasted it out. And then the water comes shooting out and it makes a mess, but I did it in the driveway. Or you could just use any kind of oil extractor, turkey baster, or something that you can suck out the coolant. You wanna empty that and then fill it up to the maximum mark. That way you know that the radiator is topped off and you have your overflow which is topped off. Then what you can do is you can turn the bike on, right? Have it warm up, go through a cycle. Once it's warmed up, the, you know, the radiator fan will kick on. If there's any kind of air that's been trapped or stuck uh, in the line, it will make its way through. Once the bike cools, you can then pop the cap again and peek inside and see if your radiator is still level. If it's not, you might have to add a little bit more coolant in there just to top it off. All you gotta do now is put the seat back on, you ready to rip. Just like that, you just change yourself your coolant. You ain't need to go to no damn dealership or nothing. You do it yourself right here in your driveway, some basic tools, and you got that dumb pack. Again, leave a comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. We are almost at 300 subs. I can't thank everybody enough. Uh, go ahead, click a video if you wanna watch some more. As always, peace!